gang, Troy Dean here, and welcome again to another live stream here on Ye Oldy Facebook. Uh, if you can see me and hear me and it's all working, can you please drop your the country that you are watching from in the comments? I just want to know that this is all working and that people are actually watching here. So tell me which country you're from in the comments. I want to get to know a little bit about who you all are. Tell me which country you are from in the comments so that I can uh, just get an affirmative that it's all working. And, and while you're doing that, just notice this absolute gorgeous sunlight here coming in uh, through the home studio window. It's absolutely spectacular. It's a beautiful day here in Melbourne, Australia. It's cool. It's going to be about 16 or 17 degrees, uh, but the sun is shining the skies are blue, and it's an absolutely beautiful day. All right, who's watching? We've got Monte Cristo, my good friend from Adelaide. How are you, buddy? Thomas Taggart is here from Texas. Jason Vance is here from Canada. Uh, Rochelle Parry is here from America. <laughs> Love it. Angie Neal is here from Australia. Simon Thomas from Wales. Knock yourself out. Keith Eldridge from Japan. Sharon Yates from Dallas, Texas says hello. Hey, Sharon. You guys are regular viewers. You've been here all week. It's fantastic. Mark Alt Schuller is here from Sydney, Australia. Jesse Heredia is here from the USA. Henry Griner is here from Minnesota. Nicole is here from Florida. Helena Danley again from Australia. Nancy Seeger from the US. Robert Macklin from the USA. I think you're five from five this week, aren't you, Robert? You've been here every day. Lisa Hewitt is here from Brisbane. Uh, Charmaine is here from our office in the Philippines. Hey, Charmaine, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, who else is here? Andy is here from Wahiki Island in New Zealand. Beautiful. Uh, Tony Zwies is here from New Zealand, and Nick Kuplin from Brisbane. I think you're also five from five, my friend. You've been here every day, haven't you? Nate Frick is here from Adelaide. Hey, Nate, how you doing? Robert Mecklen is here from Virginia. Kyle Alexander is here from Trinidad and Tobago. Jason Liversidge is here from Canada. Beautiful. Stephen Cook from Sydney. Uh, awesome, awesome. You guys are great. And uh, David Blackman is here from Oregon. Hey, David, how are you, my friend? We hung out at WordCamp Phoenix at the start of this year, I think it was the last WordCamp that they had in person for the year. Man, we just snuck that in, didn't we? That was, uh, it was a great event. It was good to be there. Uh, Henry is here. Lovely evening here on a beautiful spring day. Beautiful. All right. So thank you for doing that. Uh, now, the other thing is we are going live lots uh, on Facebook and we will continue to do so. Uh, and I want to thank you all for joining in. Uh, so uh, here's the thing. Today, I just want to recap what we've been talking about this week. I just want to recap what we've been talking about this week just to give you a little bit of context. Ida Sentner is here from Atlanta, and Andrew Island is here from almost sunny Hobart in Tasmania, which is the coldest part of Australia. Oh, and GC Anup is here from Kathmandu in Nepal. Awesome, beautiful. Hey, I'm just going to bring you up on the screen there. GC Anup from Kathmandu in Nepal. Awesome. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe and uh, happy and healthy and everything is going well. All right, so let me just recap what we've been talking about this week. All this week, we have been talking about running a business from home, either launching a new business from home or relaunching your existing business. And we have talked a little bit about these things. On Monday, we talked about the opportunity of working from home and running a business from home and why now is a great time to be doing it. Uh, Tuesday, we uh, had a great conversation with my good friend Noah Britton from Seattle. On Wednesday, we revealed the spreadsheet and the numbers that you need to run a successful business from home, and that went nut. That, that went nutballs crazy. Yesterday, we talked to my good friend Adam Silverman from Tennessee and Samantha Johnston from Southern California, and we got a little bit of insight into how they were running their business from home. And today, we're going to talk about the complete method or winning clients from home because the number one question that we get is, okay, I'm running this business from home and uh, I need clients. I need my first five clients or my next five clients. And so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to do a deep dive into getting clients. Uh, and really, it doesn't really matter where you're from, but there is a certain, I think there's a certain mindset when people are working from home in terms of uh, attracting clients. And I think it's a confidence thing. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. What I would love to know, though, is have these live streams been helpful this week? Are they valuable? Are you enjoying them? And would you like us to keep doing them? Just give me a yes in the comments. 
if these live streams are valuable and if they are useful, if you're learning stuff, if you're having fun and you'd like us to keep doing this, this is the only way we get feedback is the, uh, it's all very well to have likes and comments uh, in the, uh, the live streams, but if you put a yes in the comment, then what we do is the team go through after the, the call and they look at the number of yeses and they're like, wow, okay, people are loving this. If we don't get the yeses, we're like, hmm, we're gonna change something, uh, maybe it's not hitting the mark. But if we get the yeses, uh, then we know that we're hitting the mark and that we should keep doing it. So uh, lots of yeses here, which is awesome from Annalise. Hey, Annalise, you're a regular as well. You've been here all week, I think. Uh, so has Maureen Ciaccio and Lee Firth says, hell yes, love it, Lee, love it. That's uh, love the enthusiasm. Deborah Ruck, uh, Ben Siegfried, Andrew Island, Nick Coupland, yes, lots of yeses, lots of yeses, lots of yes, 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 yes. All right, uh, Sharon Yates says, absolutely yes. Beautiful. All right, well, I think... I think the yeses have it, as they say in Parliament. I think the yeses have it. I think we're going to keep doing this, which is uh, super exciting. <laughs> Monte Cristo says, nah, rubbish. That's why I've done all five. <laughs> That's just because you're in isolation, mate. And you've got nothing else to do. All right, cool. So let's dive in. Uh, love this too. Sharon Yates says, always learning little tidbits from your information. Fantastic. Um, here, here's what I want to do. I want to walk through the what I call the client acquisition matrix. Couldn't come up with a better name, so that's what it's called for now. But this is really what I think, these are all the components that I think you need to think about and that you need to address when attracting new clients for your business. Doesn't matter what the business is. And when I say clients, I'm talking about, uh, particularly if you are selling services. If you sell product, right, if you sell pens, Right? or you sell glassware, this is a glass from WordCamp Chicago when I spoke at WordCamp Chicago in 2014. If you're in the business of making glasses and selling glasses and it's a product, then you don't have clients, you have customers. Customers buy products, clients buy services. So what I'm talking specifically about today is how do you attract new clients into your business? And what I want to walk you through now is the client acquisition matrix, the process that you need to go through and all of the things that you need to think about when attracting new clients. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bounce over to my screen and hope this works. Ooh, look at that. It works. Yay. So I'm going to start at the top and we're just going to go through these uh, one at a time and just try and address them. Uh, now, also, if you want a copy of this matrix, uh, let me just come back here. If you want to copy this matrix, yes, thank you very much, we've done that. Uh, just leave the word matrix in the, um, in the uh, comments and we will, let me just do this here, let me just bring this up. I haven't got my little uh, call to action ready here. Where is it? Matrix, there we go. Uh, drop the word matrix in the comments to get a copy of the matrix via Facebook Messenger, okay? If you drop the word matrix in the comments, we will give you a copy of the matrix as a, a PDF or a PNG file um, via Facebook Messenger. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you through the matrix and what it all means and how to start thinking about it. And by the way, if you can hear some noise coming from the other room, uh, that is my wife and our little boy who's almost three, Oscar. They are currently attending an online class of mini maestros. Mini Maestros is a music class for toddlers. And every Friday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, he goes to Mini Maestros. And at the moment, of course, they're doing it virtually because of the uh, pandemic. So if you hear banging and singing and stomping around in the background, that is Oscar and my wife having a great time at Mini Maestros, running around in circles and singing songs and banging pots and pans together. So let's talk about the uh, client acquisition matrix. And First things first, I want to talk about the mindset of working from home. Uh, the reality is that it, it's the new normal. Working from home is the new normal. We talked about this earlier in the week. Slack ran a survey recently. Slack is, of course, the instant messaging tool that remote teams use to keep in contact with each other. We use it every single day. I could not survive without Slack, even though it is a little bit noisy sometimes and I get a little bit overwhelmed with all the chat going on. Slack is a very important tool. Uh, Helena says, I used to go to Mini Maestros with Daniel. Yeah, it's cool. Mini Maestros is super cool, isn't it? Oh, there we go. That's a bit interesting. I've just put you over the top of my face. Um, the uh, Mini Maestros is super cool. Uh, so the, the Slack survey indicated that more than 25% 
of what they call knowledge workers in the US. That is, we're all knowledge workers. We basically get paid for our information and our knowledge, not our our hands. We don't get paid to make things, right? We don't get paid to make pens or to make planners or to make glassware uh, or to service cars. We get paid for what's in our brain. And so twenty more than 25% of knowledge workers in the states are now working remotely, including C-level executives, including people who run businesses. So it's the new normal. Working from home is the new normal. Imposter syndrome is a thing. You're gonna have to deal with imposter syndrome at some point, and uh, there are some very tactical things you can do to mitigate uh, in the imposter syndrome and how much it impacts your ability to run a successful business from home. I think you need to have intention. You need to have clear intention when you work from home. I see a lot of people who are working from home uh, on their own, the one of the biggest challenges is they get distracted, they get sucked into rabbit hole after rabbit hole because they don't have a clear intention of what they want to achieve every day. And also, I think you need to think about the transition of living at home and working from home. And you need to find a way to make that transition successful so that when you're working, you're working, and when you're living at home, you're living. So let's pretend that we've all got the right mindset and we're all in a good space when it comes to that. Let's now talk about what to sell. We talked a little bit about this on Monday. Uh, what to sell, there are really three different types of business models. I think I might just dial this up a little bit and see if we can, here we go. Here we go. Uh, let's talk about what to sell. Uh, the three different types of business models are consulting, which is a, a done for you thing where you, let me just readjust that because I'm a Virgo. Uh, <laughs> consulting is done for you, and that is where you actually do the thing for the client, right? So if they hire you to write copy for them, or they hire you to make a video, or they hire you to uh, build a website, or they hire you to design a logo, you do the thing for the client. And there's two ways really you can get paid for that. You can get paid per project, or you can get paid on a recurring revenue model. Say hi to Goldie, who's joining in Mini Maestros here in the background. The second business model is the done with you business model, and uh, that's coaching, and that is where you help your clients do the thing, but you don't do it for them. You work with them to get it done, and it's more of an educational business model. Uh, you can either do that one-on-one, -on -one, which is great when you're first starting out, um, very difficult to scale in the long run and not much leverage, and eventually you can burn out, and group coaching, which is probably my favorite thing in the world. Um, consulting, by the way, is I think is the quickest way to get clients doing the consulting thing. But ultimately, it's time for money in the long run. So at some point, coaching, uh, group coaching is really a, a great model. And then the third business model is courses. And with courses, the key with online courses is you've got to have a transformation. You've got to be able to offer your customers a transformation. And here's the distinction. When you have online courses, you have customers, not clients, because they're buying a productized version of what you do in the form of an online course. So you've got to be able to offer a transformation. You've got to have a vehicle which helps enable that transformation. And you've got to have lots of social proof because buying courses online is extremely competitive. So the more social proof you have, the easier it is to sell those online courses. In fact, I would, I would, uh, I would, hesitate to say, no, I wouldn't hesitate to say, actually, I would actually say that without social proof, without testimonials or case studies or proven results for past clients, it's almost impossible to sell an online course. So now you've figured out what to sell, let's talk about what it is your, sorry, now we've talked about how to sell it uh, and what format to sell it in. Let's talk about the actual thing that you're going to sell. What is your sweet spot? There's a few things I wanna address here. The sweet spot really is the combination of what you do really well. So if you are really good at, um, I happen to be really good at SEO, uh, so I could sell SEO. I just don't really like it that much. It kind of bores me, so it's not a passion of mine. I happen to be really good at coaching and educating, and I'm very passionate about it, and turns out the market needs it. So that's a sweet spot for me. If you're really good at e-commerce, and you love e-commerce, the market definitely needs e-commerce now, so that could be a sweet spot for you. If you're really good at design, uh, I, I love design, but I'm terrible at it, and the market needs it, but it's not my sweet spot because I'm not good at it. So the sweet spot really is a combination of your skills, your passion, and what the market needs. But then you can distill that down even more using Pareto Principle and finding the 20% of what it is you do that moves 80% of the value for your clients and therefore offers the most profit to your business because you make revenue and profit 
by adding value to the customer. And the hedgehog effect is something that I learned from Jim Collins in Good to Great. It basically is, you know, what is that one thing that you can be the best in the world at and really just double down and hone in on that and excel at that. So that really is the definition of, of how you define what your sweet spot is. Uh, whoops, I'm, I'm zooming. Oh no, what have I done? I'm, uh, let me just try it again, kids. Uh, I'm moving the mouse on the wrong. Here we go. This is Ecamm coming into the, let me just roll that one back there. Okay, beautiful. Oh, come on. Here we go. There we go. Now, uh, let's talk about the beneficiaries. Once you've worked out, once you're in a good mindset, you've got some good structures set up at home so that you can work successfully and be productive. Uh, you have decided uh, what you're going to sell, whether it's consulting, coaching, or online courses. You're in your sweet spot. You're in your zone of genius. You're just doing what you do best. Then you want to talk about your beneficiaries. Now, before we get here, I just want to check in with you guys. Uh, tell me, um, do you know what your sweet spot is? Just let me know in the comments, what is your sweet spot? Do you know what your sweet spot is and the types of services that you're going to be selling from home and whether you're going to be doing consulting, coaching or online courses? Just let me know in the comments because I would love to get a bit of a, an idea as where you guys are at so that I can you know, further tailor this presentation and be the most help and the most value to you guys. So just let me know in the comments, what is your sweet spot? What are you really good at? How are you going to sell it? Is it coaching, consulting, online courses? And what is the actual thing that you're going to be offering the marketplace? Just let me know in the comments. Uh, now, once we've got that dialed in, the idea then is to identify who your beneficiaries are. And I'm not talking about who gets your money when you die. I'm talking about uh, Sharon Yates says e-commerce. Awesome. Love it. Uh, Nancy Seeger Consulting, Roy Green, not sure. Okay, that's cool, man. Uh, we're all on a journey. Ben Monk says yes, but not currently working in it. There we go. Consulting, coaching in sales, says Robert Mecklen. Love it. Consulting, helping businesses be creative with their offer to stand out from the crowd. Love it. Kaz Walter, yes, kinda. Yes, kinda. Kinda half pregnant, kind of not, says Kaz. Not really sure. Uh, Tiki Dula says, no clue on my sweet spot yet. I'd like to do consulting. Tony Zwee says consulting. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, I do consulting now, transitioning to coaching and online courses. Love it, Sharon. Love it. Such a great transition to make. Branding and websites for tradies and consulting, says Maureen. Consulting and content planning, says Matthew Presley. Beautiful. Okay. Um, the beneficiaries are not those people who get your money when you die. The beneficiaries are the people who stand to benefit the most from you being in your sweet spot. And the idea here, here is that we identify the success criteria for you taking on a client. So what does a successful client look like for you before you agree to work with them? Uh, and develop a list of 100 prospects that you can go after. Uh, also identifying the top 20 influencers in that space. I call them the fire starters because if you can get those people excited about what you do, then that's kind of the big domino that knocks over the rest of them. And also your gang of five. And your gang of five are the five people in your ecosystem who are the most valuable relationships to you. They're the ones that keep you accountable. They're the ones that inspire you to play a bigger game. And they're the ones that can actually help you move the needle and get you introduced to the right people. So they're the beneficiaries. Now, this is really about identifying the audience that you can attract by you being in your sweet spot. So it's really about honing in on who the perfect audience is for you to offer your sweet spot two in either consulting, coaching, or online courses. Next, we wanna identify and get our head around the four forces. And the four forces are basically the fears and frustrations of your beneficiaries. What are they moving away from? And what are the, what's the roadblock? So a fear is something that someone's moving away from and a frustration is a roadblock that is getting in their way. And what are their wants and aspirations? Wants are short-term, aspirations are long-term. So what do they want now and what do they aspire to achieve over the next three to five years? And what's the problem promise uh, definition of what it is you offer? So which problems do you solve and what is the promise of working with you? Once you understand this, you can, now this is really all foundational work and, and this is the work that most people don't do. And this is why most people end up becoming a generalist and just doing whatever the customer asks and says, yes, we can do that, and just accepting the work because they need the money, even though they know it's not in their sweet spot, it's probably not going to be profitable because they have to figure out how to do it. The, the client is going to drag their feet in the collaboration, and the whole project ends up just feeling a bit 
off and eventually the relationship goes south. That happens all the time. It's a very, very common outcome. That's because people don't do this work up front in identifying who the audience is, what it is we offer, and being very, very specific about the problems we solve and how we do it. Once you've done that work, this is what I believe is one of the most valuable things you can do. Oh, by the way, let me just scroll back up here for a second and, and say this. This working with intention, this piece here, right? This piece right here is probably, if you get this piece right, I promise you, you can three or four X your revenue and your productivity and your value and your profit by getting that piece right, yeah? So I would just really encourage you to think deeply about what it is you want in 12 months time. Because if you don't know what you want, if you don't have a plan for the next 12 months, you will become part of someone else's plan. And as I think it was Jim Rohn said, uh, guess what other people have planned for you? Not much, because their plans involve themselves, not you. So I just wanted to retouch on that point. Now, talking about your signature system, this is where you will go from uh, talking about with my friend uh, Helena Denley yesterday, and I'm going to bring that up again. Helena was mentioning, uh, you know, what about a client who wants to spend four hundred and fifty dollars on a on a sales page, you know, on on making a, a sales page for them. So this is where you will go from that, from selling a sales page for four hundred and fifty dollars to selling a signature system for fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand or three thousand dollars a month. Now, I know you might not think that's possible, okay? Let me just, let me just uh, draw the distinction between if you, if you don't think that's possible, it's because you are stuck believing the myth. The myth is that no one will pay me $3,000 a month for my signature system. That's a myth. And that myth will keep you stuck in that thinking that I can sell a sales page for $450, but there's no way I could sell a signature system for $1,500 a month. Uh, one of our, our new Mavericks joined Mavericks Club on Monday. He watched our signature system training on, must have been Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, yesterday, Thursday, he sold his signature system for $3,000 a month. He doesn't have a signature system yet. He's not exactly sure what it includes. Luckily for him, his contract with that client starts in July. We're running an event with Mavericks in June and he's got he's given himself basically six weeks to figure it out because he's a fast mover, takes massive imperfect action, and I love the man. He's the perfect client for me. So the truth is people will pay you $3,000 a month for a signature system. That's now the truth because we've proven, I've proven it works so many times it's I've lost count, but this new Maverick has also just proven it's, it works in less than 72 hours. He watched the training, put it in front of a customer, sold it for $3,000 a month. Doesn't even know what it includes yet. So let's talk about a signature system. A signature system is basically a journey that you take your customers on to give them that transformation. A signature system, when you break it down, is either the, the interaction that you have and the engagement that you have with a client over a 12 month period, or it could also become the curriculum for an online course. Signature system's the same thing. It's a unique process that you have developed that takes your client from zero to hero, okay? A signature system consists of deliverables, stuff that we actually do for clients. Helena, in your case, uh, selling a sales page for $450. That's a deliverable, okay? But we don't sell the deliverables, we just know what the deliverables are. We also have benefits. What is the benefit of a sales page to a customer? What is the transformation that that deliverable offers and then how do we take all those deliverables and turn them into what I call installations or standalone products that they can buy as a one-off? And then how do we group those standalone products into milestones? And milestones are what become a 12-month or a three-year or a five-year engagement with a customer. There are a series of milestones that you want to help the customer achieve so that they can achieve the overall transformation of your signature system. Now, I would suggest that if you can sell a sales page for $450, you can sell a signature system for $1,500 a month. You just got to have a slightly different conversation with maybe a different client. And I would also suggest that your marketing and your positioning up front of the conversation needs to be different. Not a lot different, but just a few tweaks so that by the time the client's speaking with you on the phone, 
They understand that you're not in the business of selling sales pages for $450. They already know that there's a much bigger game to be played here and a much bigger picture to be looked at. So that ultimately is what a signature system is. Hey, Georgia Butterfield is here. Awesome, good to see you, Georgia. Uh, don't overthink a signature system. In fact, what you are looking at right now, if I just, if I'd be a little bit cheeky here and just zoom out right here and show you the client acquisition matrix, guess what kids? What you are looking at right here is a signature system called the client acquisition matrix. Now you could come to me and ask me for some coaching or some advice and I might ask you a question and I uncover through asking you that question that you don't really know who your ideal client is, who your ideal customer is. And so I could say, you know what? I think you and I need to do some work around this, around the beneficiaries. So let's do a little bit of work around the beneficiaries and I'll put together an engagement and for you know, $1,500, you and I can do some workshops and we're gonna end up with these things installed in your business. You're gonna have a 100 prospect list, you're gonna have your top 20 and you're gonna have a gang of five and you're gonna have a very clear plan on how to leverage those things so that you can target your audience. Does that sound like it would be helpful? Yep, awesome, cool. That's gonna be $1,500 for a few workshops. Or you can take that and you can also get the rest of this because guess what? The beneficiaries works really well on its own because now you know who to target. But what you really wanna understand is also the psychology the psychographics and what motivates those beneficiaries to take action. And so I really think we need to dive into the four forces. And then of course, you're gonna to wanna to buy the four forces. And so then I'm gonna reveal that really the entire process is called the client acquisition matrix. And you can buy one of them if you like, but they work better if they, are all, if they all work together. So it's like you can have the trumpet if you like, or you can have the symphony, what would you prefer? The trumpet's kind of cool on its own, but the symphony really makes a beautiful sound when it all works together. So you're looking at a signature system right now. That's the point that I'm trying to make. So let's just go back to, uh, now that we've got our signature system dialed in, this is where the rubber really starts to hit the road. You can almost draw a line through here and go, right, now we've done all the internal thinking and all the work on our own uh, mindset and our own um, messaging and communication and planning, now we're actually going to go out and get some clients. And this is what I call panning for gold. The reason I call it panning for gold is because you have to put the pan in the water a lot and shimmy it around a lot before you find the gold nuggets. 99.5% of the people that you talk to are not going to be right for you and that's okay. What we need to do is find the half or the one or the 2% that are perfect. They're the only people we're interested in. So panning for gold comes down to this. You've got to play the numbers game. You have to be prepared to play the numbers game, okay? If you're not prepared to play the numbers game, then you just, you're not going to find, you have to be patient and you've got to be persistent. Otherwise, you're not going to find the gold nuggets. Uh, there's this great little um, book that I read to Oscar most nights. It's one of his favorite books called Dr. Maisie. And so I've adapted this into a methodology where you basically uh, you, you basically prescribe medicine to people who are in pain. And this is a great way of positioning yourself as an expert who has a specific methodology and a way of helping people. And the way to do this is just, you know, really to, to be super valuable in other people's groups, in forums, in Facebook groups, in, in other educational forums where people are asking questions and just prescribe medicine until people tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, Warren, you seem to really know a lot about this. Can we have a conversation about X because I need help with this? And at that point, you, you then get to first base, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, gift giving, I love gift giving, which is basically what I've been doing all week this week. I've just been giving you guys a whole bunch of gifts on Facebook, giving you guys a whole bunch of downloads and just adding as much value as possible and helping you out by packaging up my IP into some tangible things, training and worksheets and downloads and just giving them to you. The other thing you wanna do a lot of is organic outreach. I'm not talking about running any ads at the moment for getting your first or your next five or 10 customers. You do not need to spend any money running ads to get your next 10 customers. Organic outreach is where it's at. It's all happening through email and Facebook Messenger. 
And of course, you need some scripts and templates so that when you do this, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. When you see an opportunity in a Facebook group, you know exactly what to say, you know exactly how to position yourself, and you know exactly how to take that conversation either into email or into Messenger. Now, once you've found some gold nuggets, V. Evan says, appreciate all the gifts. Well, thank you, V. I appreciate all the engagement and I appreciate the, um, the gratitude that you guys have been giving me this week. It makes it all worthwhile. Uh, once you've found the gold nugget, how do we get to first base with a client? Well, really simple. You got to triage. You know, I've unfortunately had to take both my kids to hospital in the last couple of weeks. Oscar had a um, uh, Oscar had a um, splinter in his foot that got infected, and uh, poor little Goldie had a little bit of baby acne that got infected. So we've had to take him to hospital. Uh, both kids in the last couple of weeks. Fortunately, we live in Melbourne and we have some of the best hospitals in the world here. But when you go to hospital, you go into the triage, you go into emergency and you go into the triage and a nurse has a look at you and a nurse determines whether or not you need to see a doctor or whether or not you need to go to a pharmacy or whether or not you should just go home and write it out. A nurse determines whether or not you come past the gate and actually come into the hospital, okay? And that's what you need to do as well. You need to determine whether or not people are a good fit to work with you. Once you've triaged them, then we just get them onto a sales call and we close them. And of course, you need a script for that and so that you don't have to overthink it, right? Uh, so Alex Hall, triage means, triage is like this. I've got lots of noise coming at me. I need to triage in and prioritize all of the things in front of me. So in a, in a hospital setting, in an emergency department, you've got 15 people sitting in a waiting room and they're in a particular order to go and see the doctor in terms of the urgency of their condition. And somebody comes in with a head trauma, guess what? They're going to the front of the queue because they've got a head trauma. Somebody comes in with massive chest pains and they're sweating and they're pale, they go to the front of the queue because they're about to have a heart attack. That's what triage is. Hey, that's more important than that. That's more important than that. And it's a matter of prioritizing in in terms of urgency and importance, yep? Who goes where, exactly, Robert. That's what triage is. So you need to talk to lots of people and make a triage decision. Hey, I'm not the droid you're looking for. We're not right, I can't help you, sorry. Refer you on to someone else and then get back to panning for gold. If you triage someone and they're a good fit, get them onto a sales call. And then once you've had them on a sales call and they're in and they've said, yes, this is what I want, what's your onboarding process? This is where I see it fall over so much. And, I, and also I can tell you, this is where I have lost I can't even, I could have bought a house if I had my onboarding, I kid you not, I could have bought a house if I had my onboarding process dialed in back in 2010 or 2011 when I started appearing on stage uh, around the country speaking at small business conferences about digital marketing and I would have people lining up, literally lining up 10 or 15 deep at the end of my presentations to have their photo taken with me and I had no onboarding process, I had no sales process. I was giving away tons of gifts up here, right? I was giving away tons of gifts and people were clapping, but not paying me any money, as my friend Dana says, uh, because I didn't have a sales process and I didn't have an onboarding process. So you've got to get those things dialed in and you can do it all over Zoom or all over the telephone, which is the beautiful thing about the digital revolution. But of course, you've got to have some scripts so that you don't need to overthink it and reinvent it every time it happens. Now that we're on first base, how do we hit a home run? This is how you hit a home run, social proof. Social proof is the number one thing that will validate and add credibility to what it is you're saying. So you need to be able to get results for customers and you need a customer to put their hand up and say, hey, I worked with Warren and Helena on our sales page, on, on our launch of our thing, and this is what happened. And without them, there's no way we would have achieved those results. So you need someone to attest to the transformation that you have offered and to be able to say, yes, these guys can do what they are promising and here is proof. If you don't have that, you have gotta go and get it. The other thing you need is appointments. This is really a home run is this is how to blow up. This is kind of advanced tactics, right? But this is how to blow up what you've already proven here works through organic outreach. So at this point, it hasn't cost you any money in advertising. It's just cost you time and maybe some money and some education and some training, but you haven't spent any money on ads. Now what we're talking about is getting that social proof getting an appointment system set up where people can just a, a book an appointment in your calendar for a very specific purpose, not to pick your brain. You then wanna get some high ticket sales stuff dialed in, which is really about front loading your positioning and your marketing. So by the time people get on a call with you, they've seen some videos, they've seen some case studies and they're like, whoa, you are clearly Dr. Maisie. 
you are clearly the doctor I need to help me with my ailment. And then once you've got all that dialed in, then you can start running some paid acquisition and actually amplify the whole thing through paid traffic, whether it's through you know uh, Google ads or Facebook ads or whatever ad platform you prefer. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the, they're the nine core pillars, if you like, of uh, the client acquisition matrix. I'm just gonna recap what they are. The mindset of working from home is absolutely critical. And I think the most important thing here is working with intention and not getting distracted down rabbit holes. Then deciding, what to sell? Are we selling consulting, coaching, or online courses? What is our sweet spot? What are we really good at, super passionate about, and what does the market need? And then what's the 20% of that that moves 80% of the value? That's Pareto principle. And what is the hedgehog effect? What's our hedgehog effect? What can we be the best in the world at? Who are our beneficiaries from us working in the sweet spot? Who stands to benefit the most? Who are the top 20 influencers in that space? And who's our gang of five, the five most important relationships that we have that can help us move the needle? What are the four forces that motivate our beneficiaries to take action? What are their fears and frustrations? What are their wants and aspirations? And then what's our problem promise? What problems do we solve and what promises do we offer? What's our signature system? How do we deliver this thing over a 12 month or three year engagement? What's the big transformation we're offering? And what are our installations and standalone products that we can sell that, that you can buy individually or that hang together as a signature system? That is the number one thing that will determine whether or not you get paid $500 to build a website or whether you get paid you know, $3,000 a month. That is the number one thing that will make that difference. I, I promise you, I've seen it happen too many times for it to be an accident. Then we go panning for gold, we play the numbers game, we play Dr. Maisie, we give away tons of gifts, we do organic outreach, and we have it all templated so that we can continue to do it on autopilot or eventually hire someone to help us. You get to first base with our customers, and then we hit a home run by amplifying all this work that we've done here, which is the work that most people don't do. I'll tell you what most people do. Most people start here. In fact, most people start here, yeah? Some people start here, <laughs> right? I don't know why, some people have just got lots of money they wanna waste on paid acquisition. Some people start here, right? Most people start here. They just go into Facebook groups, they go into email and they start trying to pitch their thing, yeah? Most people, you've seen it happen all the time. You, you know, the most annoying thing on Facebook is those posts that say, hey, I'm looking for blah, 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 blah to help me with this blah, 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 blah. What's your biggest challenge right now? You know what my biggest challenge is right now? These annoying Facebook posts asking me what my biggest challenge is right now. They're an interruption. This is where most people start, okay? They haven't done this thinking. They haven't got a signature system. They don't really understand who they serve and why those people take action. They don't really know what their sweet spot is. They're trying to do everything. They're trying to please everyone. They're trying to do all the things for all the people. A lot of people start here. Like, oh, I'm gonna start an online course, really? I know a lot of people look at what we're doing and go, yeah, online courses are the way of the future, and they are, but we didn't start there. Oh, no, 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 no. I started here. I started doing the thing for the people. Then I went here. I was doing this for free. I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching for free to prove that I had a transformation and that I had a vehicle and to get social proof. Then, that was the last thing we did, right? A lot of people start there. So most people just won't do this work Okay, which is why I think it's such a great opportunity for you guys who are watching this to actually start doing this work. You're gonna be so far ahead of your competition because most people just won't sit down and do this work. They just get impatient. A uh, Couple of questions. Yes, the app that I'm using for this mind map is called whimsical.com. I love it, it's absolutely love it. I spend most of my life in whimsical these days. Uh, now, what I do wanna know is, do you guys have any questions? I'm sure you do. Uh, I'm sure you guys have got lots of questions. I do want to take uh, some questions. Um, what I will say though is this, I, I know there's lots of questions around, I know you're gonna have lots of questions. There. So let, let, me, let me just pre-frame this for you, right? I know you're gonna have lots of questions around, uh, you know, well, how do we set our intention when working from home? Let me just come here. How do we set our intention? What's the framework for that? Like what are the tactics that we need to set our intention? How do we mitigate imposter syndrome? What are some of the practical things we can do there? What does a successful transition look like? If we're group coaching, what does that look like? What is the transformation? Uh, I know a lot of people have got questions about the signature system. Um, how do we define our hedgehog effect? Uh, what, what does this look like? I mean, where do we put those prospects? How do we reach out to the top 20? How do we nurture our gang of five? Oops. 
How do we, uh, here we go. Let me just put that back in there. How do we nurture our gang of five? Um, how do we identify the four forces? What is it? How do we develop our signature system? I know you've got lots of questions about this. What are the scripts for these? What are the scripts and the templates for panning for gold? What are the scripts for getting to first base? Uh, what is high ticket sales? How do we set appointments? You've got lots of questions. I get it. And the good news is that next week, we are unveiling our brand new training. We're opening the doors to our brand new training to help you get your next 10 clients. Next Wednesday, the 3rd of June at 10 o'clock Sydney time. Los Angeles is Tuesday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Uh, Eastern time, New York is next Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock. We are opening the doors to our brand new training for the first time to help you get your next 10 clients. And in that training, we are going to cover all of those questions that you've got about the client acquisition matrix, the scripts, the templates, the outreach, the processes, the systems, the worksheets, and there's gonna be immense accountability to make sure that you get through that training. So put that in your calendar, that will be happening. It, by the way, if you have added the word matrix into the comments here, uh, which I'll just uh, get you to do again. If you stick the word matrix in the comments here, I will send you a copy of this matrix via Facebook Messenger, and we will also drop you a note next week when we are about to go live so that you can join in that special training next week and get all of the details on our brand new training and be the first to get into the doors. But for now, I'm happy to take some questions. I wanna take some questions in the time that we have left and... Uh, uh, so hopefully uh, get you guys answered. Here we go. So, Helena Denley. <clears throat> Helena Denley, what about the gurus that say start with courses or masterminds? Well, let me hazard a guess, Helena, that the gurus that tell you that you should start with an online course or a mastermind might be in the business of teaching you and in fact selling you a program to teach you how to put together an online course or a mastermind. Am I right? Am I maybe right on the, yeah, perhaps? Uh, I will tell you wholeheartedly, there are people who try to hire me as a coach to help them develop an online course. And I say no to 99.9% .9 of them. Uh, one, because A, I don't really do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching these days. I do a little bit, but not a lot. I certainly wouldn't take on a client who has no social proof, no transformation, has no idea what they're doing, hasn't got any results for clients, and they want to launch an online course. I just wouldn't do that because it would be a disservice to them. And I am in the business of teaching people how to create online courses, and we have a very successful mastermind ourselves. And at some point, I am already planning to put together a program to teach people how to run masterminds and online courses. But the students that I have in those programs will be people who already have existing business models that are profitable and already have success on, on the on the scoreboard. So I would hazard a guess that the gurus that are telling you to start with courses and masterminds are probably uh, have a financial interest in trying to sell you a course on how to put together a course or a mastermind. Uh, the, the, I have seen so many people try to launch an online course and fail because they don't have an audience and they don't have proof. I think the most, well, and I know the most successful online course creators in the world are those that already have proof and have already been hustling their pants off to prove that they've got a methodology that works and have tons of social proof. How about market research for the area we want to work in, Henry? Yep, absolutely. How about market research for the area we want to work in? I'm not sure what the specific question there is, uh, but if, you, if I just take you back to the uh, matrix for a moment, <clears throat> let's have a look here, what have we got? Okay, so uh, let's talk about market research. Uh, let's start talking about beneficiaries. So the beneficiaries and the four forces is where you spend a lot of time doing market research on who it is you're going to be selling to and who your client is. I think of it like this. Your job is to identify who you serve, who you want. For me, it's a two year play. If you wanna really build a successful business, whether it's consulting, coaching or courses, if you wanna build a successful business, it's a two-year project. If you're not prepared to put two years into it, don't, don't start. Don't bother. You're wasting your time and everyone else's time. It's a, like, what are you going to do? You're going to take up tennis lessons and expect to be serving aces in three months? No. You're going to take up piano and expect to be playing a concert symphony in three months? No. It's a two-year play. Martial arts, it's a two-year play. Learning how to do the, 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 the tango, it's a two-year play. I think it takes two years to become really good at something. 
doesn't take five, it doesn't take 10, it takes two years of consistent, habitual, gradual, incremental improvements to become really good at something, right? So the, my question for you is, who do you wanna serve for the next two years and can you serve them better than anyone else? If you can, if you believe you can and you want to and you've got that motivation and you've got that drive and you've got that passion, happy days. I've been doing this for seven years now and I don't think my passion is wavering. I don't think my energy and my, my, my motivation is wavering. I've been turning up and showing up for seven years to teach freelancers and small business owners in the creative and marketing space how to improve their business. And I'm still here and I'm still doing it. This is not a short-term play. So the beneficiaries and the four forces is where you really do the market research around how you can serve those people better than anyone else. Uh, Mona, yes. Mona, all you need to do is, oh, here we go. Sorry, Mona. Mona, drop the word matrix in the comments to get the matrix. Just put the word matrix, nothing else, just the word matrix in the comments and we will send you a copy of the matrix via Facebook Messenger. Uh, Kyle Peter Alexander says, this is brilliant. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate the, um, the kind words. It really makes a difference. <clears throat> Tony says, awesome, Troy. You blow my mind every time. Thank you, my friend. Is that a, is that a camera you're holding there on your avatar? Are you a filmmaker? Oh, I have a, a passion for film and music, man. Uh, it looks like you're a DP there. Um, hit me up. Tell me what you're working on. Uh, all right. Do you guys have any questions? Come on, you've got to have some questions, please. Nancy, uh, Matrix, I dropped a line to support at wpillovation.com. I'm not getting the messages. All right, Nancy, I'll make sure we follow that up. Thank you. Uh, if anyone from support is watching, can you please make sure Nancy gets the Matrix and also make sure she is added to our messenger list so that she gets the messages when we uh, go live. Raymart has dropped the word Matrix. I think you might need to just remove the inverted commas there. Yeah, just type the word matrix into the chat, uh, M-A-T-R-I-X, and uh, we'll get you the matrix via Facebook Messenger. That's right. Yep, you just type the single word matrix without any other words. Uh, here we go, Ben Monk. It seems that market need is one of the most critical things early on. Yes, you could do a lot of work only to go to market to find there's no market need. Words of wisdom, right. So um, here's a hack. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to drop a name here, right? Just because it's perfect context, but also I love dropping names. Uh, I interviewed Seth Godin on my podcast. <clears throat> yes, that's right. I interviewed Seth Godin on my podcast and he said something so obvious and so simple, but uh, such a great reminder. He said, here's a radical idea. Why don't we find something that people want to buy and make it? instead of making something we think they want to buy and then trying to sell it to them. And here's an even more radical idea. Why don't we find people with money and find out what they're buying and make that rather than making something we think people want to buy to then go and try and sell it to people with no money, which is what most of us do because it's easier and it's more comfortable. The hard work is actually talking to people with money and finding out what they need and then fulfilling that need in a unique way, i.e. a signature system. Uh, Helena, what if a person thinks that the course path first is more suited to them? Well, that's fine if you think it's, and I'm gonna use you as an example here, and sorry to pick on you again, uh, but you did put your hand up. Um, if you think that producing a course is more suited to you, that's fantastic for you, but it's, we're not listening to the market. It doesn't matter what you think is more suited to you. It only matters what, pe it, uh, the only thing that matters is what people with money think. That's the only thing that matters, right? If the people with the money don't think that your course is worth buying, then you're gonna spend a lot of time producing a course that uh, uh, ain't gonna make any sales, right? Uh, how much proof do you need? You don't need a lot of proof. You just need compelling proof. I mean, the more proof, the better, but you don't need a lot of proof to get started. Uh, you just need, compelling proof that it works. So you might think that I just want to produce online courses because I don't want to do consulting and that's totally fine. But how's that working out? It, like it doesn't matter what you think, it only matters what the market thinks. And I do think there is a market for online courses. I know there is, there's definitely a market for online courses, but you've got to get your ducks in a row. How do you find the psychographs of your potential clients you want to work with? Michael Lorenzana, 
I'm going to give you an insider tip. Just go to crystalnose.com. That's all I'm going to give you, my friend. Crystalnose.com. And uh, you can thank me later. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. Kyle, what's the average time frame to complete the client acquisition matrix? Well, that's a great question. It depends on how much time you've got and how motivated you are. But I think really you can get through it in about four weeks. Now, it's not going to be perfect. No way is it going to be perfect in four weeks. But you can have a first draft. I'll tell you the stuff that takes the most time is the signature system and then panning for gold is just a numbers game, right? Uh, the, you, can, you can get to panning for gold in, you know, you can, you, can be, you can get clients within four weeks. There's absolutely no question. I mean, as I said, we just had a new Maverick join Mavericks Club on Monday, went through some of the training and uh, slightly different training to what we're offering next week, but went through some of the training and sold a $3,000 a month signature system on Thursday. So he did it within 72 days. Now that's not normal, right? And I'm not saying that, that you can expect to do that. You can get through the uh, client acquisition matrix in four weeks and you, could, you can definitely get clients within that four weeks. It's not gonna be finished. It's gonna be a first draft and then you can continue to iterate on it and improve it. Um, yeah, right. Luke says, everyone says you can do it overnight. Thanks for the honesty. Two years to build something is realistic. The reason that everyone tells you you can do it overnight is because they want to sell you their thing. They want to sell you their program saying, no, oh, you can do it overnight. If I can do it, anyone can do it. You can do it. It only takes three minutes to make a million dollars. And it's horseshit. They're telling you that because uh, they want you to buy their thing, right? Alex Hall says, so I'm all about integrity and authenticity, man. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to take, you know, three minutes and you can't do it. You can do it overnight because it's just not true. Alex Hall says, does your signature system have to be totally unique to you? This is a great question, Alex. I want to talk about my favorite example in recent times, and it's a software example, right? I was using lead pages and WordPress back in, I don't know, 2000 and I'm going to make something up, 2010, 2011, 2012. I was using lead pages and WordPress to capture leads into my business. And then this funny little guy out of uh, Utah comes out with this product called ClickFunnels. And I, someone recommended it to me and I had a look at it and I'm like, huh, this is like lead pages, but all the pages are organized in folders. That's really useful. The actual software itself and what I can do with it wasn't actually as good as lead pages. I can actually do more with lead pages than I could with ClickFunnels. But ClickFunnels was organized into folders. They just called them funnels. That was really interesting. Then Russell Brunson went on this rampage for at least two years. His messaging was, you don't need a website, you need a funnel. Now his messaging is, you're one funnel away, which is, of course, horseshit because without a great product and without an audience, you're not one funnel away from anything. You're just one funnel away from paying him an extra $97 a month, right? The truth is the funnel ain't gonna fix your problems, but he's done an amazing job of convincing everyone they need a funnel because the only place you can get a funnel is click funnels. You can't get a funnel at lead pages, they sell pages. And you can't get a funnel at WordPress because they sell blogging and content management. You can only get a funnel at click funnels. So your signature system in terms of what you deliver doesn't have to be unique to you. But what has to be unique is the way you present it and the way you communicate it. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just going to have a drink, a sip of water while I peruse these questions. All right, Nigel Rogers, a large part of this is overcoming psychological hurdles. Absolutely. It's hard to believe and stick to the script. Like Troy said, people get impatient. That's right. Absolutely. It's like when you go to, when you start going to the gym, right? And you've been going to the gym for three weeks and nothing happens. And then you cave and you, you know, uh, pig out on chocolate cake after dinner one night and that extra glass of red wine, which you probably know you shouldn't because you're trying to get into shape, and you go back to the gym and you're just getting impatient because it's not happening quickly enough. And good personal trainers, what good personal trainers do is they give you a quick win to keep you hooked in. It's like playing the pokies, right? Like playing the poker machines or gambling. They give you a quick win to keep you hooked in because they know that if you stay there long enough, you will get results. Yeah. Uh, hey, come on, says, thanks, Troy. Glad you like the half horse drawing. Yes, come on, sent me a fabulous message yesterday in Messenger, uh, which is of a, uh, a horse. Half of it was really well drawn and the other half was a scribble. And of course it is, you know, when, when clients say they can do it themselves, this is what happens. Uh, that was very funny. We had a laugh about that. 
Uh, boom, 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 boom. Okay. Uh, Henry Griner says, this helped me to focus on my new website that I've been working on. Thanks so much. Hey, Henry, absolutely. Uh, absolute pleasure. Um, <laughs> Ron Person says, I got the first Matrix, but blew the download. Need a second copy. Uh, stick Matrix in. If that doesn't work, just email support at wpelevation.com, uh, Ron, and we'll get you sorted out. Georgia Butterfield says, ah, yes. Not entirely sure what she's saying ah, yes about, but I'm all in with you, Georgia. I love the optimism and the positivity. Just wanted to share it. Hey, quick reminder, tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, sorry, forget that. Next week, we're opening the doors to our brand new training to help you get your next 10 clients. Uh, it is opening next Wednesday, the 3rd of June at 10 o'clock Sydney time. That is Tuesday afternoon in Los Angeles at five o'clock and Tuesday evening in New York at eight o'clock next week. Uh, if you have dropped a comment uh, in the comments here with the word matrix, we will hook you up and we will let you know when we are going live so that you can join in and get all the details on that new training. Drop the word matrix in the comments to get the matrix. Uh, Chad Sultana, how do you approach someone with money? What information do you need off these people? Well, my question is, I know you've been approaching people. How do you approach people without money? It's the same thing. You approach people with money the same way that you approach people without money. It's just a mindset thing. Um, the best way to approach people is to have a gift up your sleeve, to be able to offer them, offer them some value and give them something because that removes the whole need to do cold calling, which I think, by the way, cold calling is the worst thing you can do for your own morale. I think it's the worst thing you can do for your potential clients because you're interrupting them. And I just think it's the worst thing that you can do for the you know humanity in general. Stop cold calling, you don't need to. Uh, Mike Brock, could you send us that quote from Seth Godin, Priceless? Um, I, I, you know, you'd have to go and have a look at our podcast and uh, just have a look at the WP Elevation podcast and find the episode with Seth Godin. It's all in there. Um, uh, three minutes to make a million dollars. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, did it, did it. Hey, come on, uh, it says, here we go. Uh, how can I touch base with you while I'm developing my business to see if I can apply for the Mavericks Club? I understand there is a conscious commitment required to stay in the club. Uh, come on, just email support at wpelevation.com with the word Mavericks and we'll take care of it from there. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Mavericks Club is our mastermind program for our high-performing customers. Uh, there we go, uh, it's all there. Email support at wpelevation.com with the subject line Mavericks if you'd like to know more. It's not for everyone and it is a five-figure investment and it is a 12-month commitment, so uh, be aware. Uh, but for those, for uh, we are rolling out a brand new training next week to help you get your next 10 clients. It's all based around the client acquisition matrix. We're basically going to help you install this thing in your business. Uh, it opens next week. Wednesday, 3rd of June at 10 o'clock Sydney time. That's 5 p.m. Tuesday afternoon in Los Angeles and 8 o'clock Tuesday night if you're in New York. And uh, Sandy Everleth, hello, Sandy has dropped the word matrix into the comments there to get the matrix, which is awesome. Are you going live on Monday or just on Wednesday? We're just going live Wednesday next week. I'm taking Monday and Tuesday off. We're going live uh, Wednesday next week, which will be our only live stream next week. But then we will be back. I've been enjoying doing these live streams so much that we are planning on doing these live streams on a more regular basis. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Here we go. Sharon Yates has got an interesting question. I have social proof from my current customers. How can I use their social proof to promote myself in the coaching arena? Easy. Just ask them if it's okay to use their testimonials. Uh, on your website. That's all we do. Hey, is it okay if I use this testimonial um, on my website and in my social media campaigns? And they say yes. And I say cool. And then I can use that testimonial to promote whatever. Um, doesn't have to be services that I'm promoting. It can be coaching or it can be online courses. I hope that answers that question. Uh, I know. Thank you very much. Uh, way too much fun with the sound pads uh, here. Uh, lots of people putting matrix in the uh, in the comments. Here we go. Great question here, Kyle. How feasible is it to go from Blueprint to Mavericks, especially if your mind is still blown and you're still catching up on subcourses? Kyle, I, I cannot tell you how many people have been through WP Elevation and have joined Mavericks. Mavericks is the fast track, my friend. If you just want to get on a fighter jet and get there faster, uh, you get access to all of our online courses. It's an all-you-can-eat buffet 
and it's concierge version. The coaches are here to hold your hand every step of the way. So if you want to know more about Mavericks, Kyle, I would strongly suggest that you email support at wpelevation.com with the subject line Mavericks if you'd like to know more. We do have an event coming up in the middle of June, so your timing is perfect. Of course, it is going to be an online event uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, So email support at wpelevation.com with the subject line Mavericks if you'd like to know more and we'll be in touch, uh, Kyle. All right. um, Hey, do you guys have any questions? I do want to bounce out of here because I've got some other things that I need to go and attend to, but I just want to make sure there are no final questions uh, before we leave you. Uh, Just a quick reminder, next week we are opening the doors to our brand new training to help you get your next 10 clients, uh, your first 10 clients or your next 10 clients. Uh, Sydney. It is Wednesday, June the 3rd at 10 a.m. We will be live here on Facebook. Los Angeles time, that is 5 p.m. next Tuesday afternoon. And in New York, it is 8 p.m. Tuesday evening. Uh, So if you have connected with us here on Messenger, we will send you a note. Drop the word matrix in the comments to get a copy of this matrix. And then we will also uh, let you know when we're going live next week. Sean Michael Smith has a question here. And the question is... Will proof that our system has worked in our own business work as social proof? Absolutely. I mean, he, here's the way I look at this. I teach things that work in our business. I feel more confident if I can teach something that I know works in someone else's business because then it removes me as the X factor, so to speak, and I say that humbly, but it removes me. And if I can teach it to one other person and it works, I go, cool, that's social proof. The more proof I can get, the better. But if you've done something and it's worked in your business, you can definitely use that as proof um, and you can start teaching it. There's absolutely no question. Cody Stinson says, thanks, Troy, for the awesome info. Super appreciate all you do for us. Hey, Cody, thank you, man. Uh, I appreciate you being a part of the audience and I appreciate the kind words and uh, it makes all the difference to know that we're having an impact and we're helping you guys. All right, I do need to bounce out of here. So um, I look forward to seeing you all uh, next week. Uh, Just a final preview there, opening the doors to our brand new training to help you get your next 10 clients uh, next Wednesday, June 3rd at 10 a.m. in Sydney. It's Tuesday afternoon in Los Angeles. It's Tuesday night in New York. So stick around for that. Make sure that you keep your eyes on Messenger and your email. We'll be notifying you when we go live. Come in at that training and find out all about it. We're going to be revealing all the details, and I really hope to see you in the program there. Hey, Felicia. Uh, Always great gems from you. Good to see you again. All right, have a great weekend, gang. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.